Hello all and welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at factorising trinomials um, and in particular monic trinomials. And we're going to look at a method called fire inspection. Um, but you might be sitting there going, what the hell is a monic trinomial? So before we look at the slide, I'm going to jump ahead to a blank slide and we're going to go through a couple key terms. Mathematical literacy. So first off, we're going to start with a polynomial. Polynomial. What is a polynomial? Uh, you've seen a couple of them, the basic quadratics, the basic linear equation, but the most basic form of a polynomial is ax n plus bx1 plus cx to the minus 2 plus dot 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 dot, and we keep going until we have f x to squared plus um g x plus h. So what a polynomial is is it's a collection of all these terms in increasing levels of power. So we have our first, our most basic. We have a constant, then we have a term with x to the power of 1, then we have a term with x to the power of 2, then the next up from the polynomial we would have e to the x power of 3, and it keeps going on and on to whatever order, we say polynomials have an order of whatever the power is here, the biggest power. Okay, So if this term here was a to the x to the 7, we'd say this is a 7th order polynomial because the largest the term with the largest x power okay is seven so it's the seventh order polynomial okay so what are we looking at we were looking at trinomial okay so a trinomial is a polynomial tri has guess what three terms okay so we are generally looking at and instead of using fgh we are going we generally have ax plus bx plus c, three terms, so we a tri. Okay, so we start with polynomial, we're now looking at a special case of that trinomial where we have three terms, and then we're going to look at monic trinomial. Oh, I can't see today. What does monic mean? Monic means that this first term right here is a one. Okay, so it's going to be one x plus something x plus c okay and one we know from just basic algebra writing that we don't actually write the one there so monic trinomials are going to be x squared plus b c so it is a polynomial of order two square and it's monic because it just has a coefficient of let's go back last slide hopefully that clarifies some terms so below is a basic monic trinomial it is a monic because the coefficient of x squared is one okay, there's a one here but we aren't actually writing the one and i fixed the eraser in the last slide the last video they gave me a bunch of issues okay we can factorize this monic trinomial using a method called inspection what we're always going to try and find, we need two numbers because we're taking this monic trinomial and we're going to factorise in the form of x plus something, and I'll call this e, x plus f. And we're going to try and find these two numbers, e and f. Now these two numbers for a monic trinomial, it turns out, okay, are always when we multiply them together, e and f, okay, when we multiply them, those two numbers are always going to equal c. In this case, we're going E times F will always equal to C, plus term constant. Also, okay, those two same numbers, if we add them together, E plus F will always equal B. And what we're going to do is look at our monic trinomial and try and find these two numbers E and F by just looking at it, looking at it for inspection. What we're normally going to do is look at our constant term C and look at the factors of it. Okay. What are the two numbers that will multiply to give us C? And then we'll test if we can add them together to give us B. So let's have a look at this very first example here. Okay. 
and I'll write some stuff over here. So six, how can we make six? We can make that as one times six. We can make it as three times two. We can also, and this is really important, we need to remember negative factors. Have some problems that use this. Three times negative two. Six is equal to six times negative one. Okay, so just from six, it's actually four combinations. We E and F, these two, these two, these two, and these two. We need to look at, okay, which of those sets are also going to add together to give us B. So B in this case is five. How can we make five from this? Well, one plus six is seven, that doesn't work. Three plus two equals five. So we can say straight away that X plus, we're gonna use our first number, three, X plus two, our second number, is the factorization of this monic trinomial. Now quickly we can double check by doing an expansion. So get x squared plus 2x plus 3 plus 6 equal to plus 5x plus 6. So yes, it works. Let's go on to the second one. Okay. And again, we're going to start with first. First we do this. And we do this. We get a whole bunch of list of C, and then we can try the second one. So factors of two. Okay. Well, two is equal to times two. Two is equal to negative one times negative two. That's about it. That's going to be one of these two. So we look at these two. What do they add to give us this? Well, one plus two is positive three. Doesn't work. Negative one plus negative two gives us negative three. So that works. Okay. Negative one plus negative two equals negative. So that works. Those two combinations work for what we see in F. So we can say this is equal to x minus one bracket x minus two. Now the order that you put these two in does not matter. Okay. We could write this also as x bracket x minus one. Okay. As long as you keep the signs together, that's fine. Either of these two are correct. Let's go on to this next one. Ooh, negative 16. So again, we're going to look, sorry, we're looking at our constant term. We're looking at this first. What two numbers can I multiply to give me negative 16? Negative 16. We could do negative 16 positive 1. We can also do 16 times negative 1. You're going to realize with negative constant terms, there's going to be a whole lot of con combinations where you're switching the negative term. We can also do it equal to negative eight times two. We can do two times negative eight. We can have negative four times four and the other order version of that does not. That's the main ways we can make 16. So let's see which ones will add to give me my middle term. And of course, after you do this repetition, you get used to the pattern, you're not going to have to actually write out this whole list. You'll be doing it via inspection. You'll do it in your head. You'll go 16 and 1. Oh, there's no way I can use 16 and 1 to add together 6. 4 and 4, there's no way I can add together 4 to give me 6. So it's going to be 2 and 8. Yeah, 2 and 8. That I can make 6 from that. Which combination is it going to be? Well, I need to make negative 6. So it's going to be negative 8 plus 2. That gives me negative six, lovely. So these are my two numbers, negative eight and plus two. So I'm gonna go x minus eight. I have to use negative for that, x plus two. Again, we could write that as x plus two, x minus two. And switch the order as long as in the sign. So that is factorizing a trinomial and a monic trinomial. That's what I want to clarify. We can only use this inspection method only for monic trinomials, only if this coefficient here okay, is one. It only works for that. If we have a different number there, we cannot use factorization by inspection. So that was that's from before. Okay. Now we're going to apply this. We're going to apply this in some, let's have a quick look at some basic examples first. Okay, 3x on 12, that's the same. 3 times 4, we can cancel our 3s, so that is x 4. This one straight off the bat, 
Okay. That and that cancel off, so we get equal to three on nine, which is third. Here, not quite as straightforward. We need to take out a factor on the top in our numerator, so we're going to do that. X, we can then cancel X, left with equaling all over. So I said before, come back to here, this only works, factorizing this mnemonic trinomial by inspection only works if our coefficient is one. Remember from the previous video on 5b or 5a, before we even think of factorizing anything, there's a method we should use and that's taking a common factor. We always look to take the common factor first, okay? Straight away here, you're like, oh, that's a trinomial. X squared minus 21X plus 36 trinomial inspection, but oh no, we have a problem. We have three here. What you should do when you're looking at all these problems, the very first thing you should be thinking is, can I factorize this by just first taking out a factor and, and we can take the three out. Minus seven X, 12. Okay? Now this three out the front, we can just leave it here. And now looking at this X squared minus seven, x plus 12, that's a monic trinomial, so we can try and factorize it by inspection. x, okay, two terms that multiply to give me 12, but add to be negative seven. The negative here is a hint that both of these are gonna actually be negative numbers. The only way I can get a negative solution is add two negative numbers. So we can think, oh, six, negative six, negative two, I can't make seven with negative three and negative four multiplied together is 12 negatives so you negative three times four equals 12 negative three plus negative four seven tick tick that works so three four at the top here and i take out a common factor first thing you should ask yourself i can't down the bottom can i take out a common factor no i can't then I go from there, okay, the top is a monic trinomial. Can I use inspection? Let's have a go. We're gonna go x, x, bracket, multiply to give me negative 27, add to give me negative six, okay. So let's maybe try negative nine times positive three, gives me negative 27, and we can go negative nine plus positive three, that gives me negative six, all that works. Okay, so we can use those. So we had, what do we have? A minus nine plus three all over X plus three. And the bottom in this case is a hint, like these problems are always gonna work a certain way. I've got an X plus three on top. It's likely then I'm gonna have an X plus three as my factor on the top. And it just so happens we did. So guess what? We go like that. And this is X nine. And who would have thought this convoluted expression up here is actually the same as just x minus? Okay, let's have a look at this. What should we be doing first? Can I take out a common factor? Yes, I can in this case. Take out two x squared minus two x minus 15, all over. And on the bottom, I can take out a two again, x squared minus nine. Okay, go from here. Oh, look at that, we can cancel off our twos. Okay. Let's look at the top, what do we have? We have a monic trinomial, so let's try and factorize it by inspection, negative 15. So I'm thinking negative five times by positive three straight off the bat, gives me negative 15, negative five plus three gives me negative two, that's what I need. Tick, tick, those work. This turns into x minus 5, x 3, all over x squared minus 9. You're like, oh, I can't get more. Um, but if you've watched the other videos, what is this? What is this? It's two terms and it has a square. It's a difference of perfect squares. So I get x minus five, x plus three. And this difference of perfect squares, we remember if we have a squared minus b squared, 
I can write that as a minus b bracket a plus b. Okay, this 9 can be written as 3 squared instead. So this turns into x. Put this here. We don't write it like that. We write it as 3 squared. So we can write this as x minus 3 plus 3. And looky there, we write problems that allow a nice cancellation. Equals x minus 5 on x minus 3. And that's that. So we've applied a whole bunch of different things from the previous two sections in this section to a bunch of factorization and calculation. We had taking out a common factor, we then had a monic trinomial which we could factorize section. Over here, common factor both ways, monic trinomial on top, we factor perfection. On the bottom, we had a difference of perfect squares. We can use our shortcut to factorize it. Okay. We can use this as well with thirds. Might appear if you see thirds, don't freak out. There's probably a solution to this. And when did we see thirds? We saw it in the different perfect squares. So let's look at this top term, a here, okay, it's a square, subtract another term. Generally we can turn this into a difference of perfect square, so let's give that a go. We can say this is squared minus square root of 11 squared, all over x minus square root of 11. This difference of perfect squares on top, okay, we can use our shortcut to turn this into x minus root 11 plus root 11 over 11. There, cancel, cancel, back equals x plus root 11. This one over here is exactly the same thing. It just looks more complex. Don't freak out when you see something a little more complex. Okay. So what do I have? I have, and when you see the brackets go, oh, I think of term first. It's a single term, squared minus another term. Oh, it's going to be a diff. We can turn this into difference of perfect squares. So we can write this as x minus 2 squared minus the square root of 7 squared on x minus 2 plus root 7. This turns into x minus 2 minus root 7 all by x minus 2 plus root 7 over x minus 2 plus root 7. And same thing, we get this x plus 2 plus 7. Oh, x, well, yeah, okay. That, that's a subtraction. There we go. Okay. X minus 2 plus root 7. X minus 2 plus root 7. Again, cancel, cancel. We are left with it equaling to X minus 2 minus root 7. So again, something that looks very complex. Simplified to a much easier expression. Okay, so a quick review. There's four ways to factorize a quadratic. There's going to be four ways to factorize a quadratic trinomial. I haven't told you about the other ones. Today we just looked at the inspection method. The big thing with the inspection method, we can only use it for a monic trinomial. Like I said, I can't say today. Monic trinomial. So the coefficient of the x squared term can only be one. If it's not one, what you should be looking at is can you take out the con factor? If you can't take out the con factor, then the methods I'm going to show you in the following sections will be what we use. Okay. If you can take out the common factor, get rid of that first term, then you will use it by inspection. How do we do inspection? Well, if we have x squared plus bx plus c, we're looking for two numbers. We'll call them e and f. We're looking for two numbers e and f that if we multiply them, it gives us c. and if we add them, it gives us b, and we can then factorize it by x plus x. Two magic numbers that 
time by just looking at the problem, looking at the problem. And that is it for exercise C. If you have any questions, stick them on the Google Classroom or on the video uh, comments below or on Compass. Thank you.